Hi there, my name is Jonathan Bent. I'm an application scientist with Picaro. The purpose of this video is to give you instructions on how to cut, pre-swage, and install tubing and swage lock fittings on your Picaro analyzer. First, before we move on, a quick point of order. You'll find this best practices guide in the box in which your analyzer ship. Please have a read through it. We talk about maintenance and water vapor, and I want to talk about water vapor. These analyzers are designed explicitly to account for the spectroscopic interference that water imposes on other species like CO2. However, like any analyzer, it does best when you shut it down with very little water vapor in the cavity. When you shut down the instrument, please follow either of two possible methods. Either use a column like dry write, a desiccant, or use a dry gas like nitrogen or zero air. Flow the gas through the analyzer for three to five minutes until the concentration of water vapor comes down below 2,000 parts per million. At that point, you can feel comfortable to turn off the analyzer. I'm going to start by discussing the contents of the dry gas kit. Purchasing this from us will simplify the process of procuring all of the components. The first element is the tubing. In this bundle here, we have 8 inch stainless steel and quarter inch Teflon, which can be used in some systems. I'm going to talk just about the 8 inch stainless steel tubing. Let's talk about the main component of the dry gas kit, and that, of course, is the regulator. This is a CGA 590 regulator that is appropriate for gases that contain oxygen. You'll be able to tell it by the scoring on the hexagonal portion of the thread. And remember that a CGA 590 is a reverse thread, so when you tighten it onto your cylinder, you're going to have to tighten it the opposite way that you're used to with screws. Install the toggle valve in the following way. In order to get the orientation of the Teflon tape, hold the valve in your right hand, Teflon tape in your left. Take out the tape, apply it along the 8th inch MPT thread, and do two to three full revolutions of Teflon tape, completely covering up the thread, but making sure not to cover the aperture for the gas. Pull, smooth down that end, and then insert the toggle valve thread into the relevant thread on the regulator. Once you have the Teflon tape on the thread and the thread inserted into the regulator, hand tighten it as far as you can, clockwise. Once it gets to that point, use a 9 16th wrench to tighten it as far as it'll go before you start to meet any resistance, typically somewhere in the range of one rotation. Place the regulator into the cylinder. Remember, this is a 590, so it's a reverse thread. Tighten it until it's finger tight. Then take a 1 and an eighth inch wrench and finalize it, tightening reasonably tight and making sure the gauges are oriented so you can read them. So let's talk about the components of a swage lock compression fitting. Switch lock compression fitting comes in three parts. In this case, an eighth inch compression fitting comes with a nut, a back ferrule, which has a small collar on it. That small collar needs to face towards the tip of the tubing. And then the front ferrule, this little cone. You should see that the collar sits slightly under the, the cone. Put those pieces together. And then if at all possible, use what's called a pre-swaging tool. This device that you see here, you can purchase it from Swage Lock directly. Using a pre-swaging tool has the advantage that it can be used over and over again. It can also be placed in a vise, which is why we have this vise for this video. Once it's in place, finger tighten it. Then for an eighth inch fitting, make sure you tighten it three quarters of a turn. For a quarter inch fitting, one and a quarter turns. After you've done that, back it off. And check the fitting. You should see now that the two components of the ferrule 
are basically fused together. Not perfectly fused, but the back collar now sits under the front funnel. The nut should move freely. In your dry gas kit, you'll see a blue box with a tubing cutter in it. Remove that tubing cutter and use this blue handle to back the dial out until you have about a half an inch of room in between the blade and the rollers. And then insert the eighth inch tube in there until the point that you need to cut. Typically to uh, bridge the distance between a cylinder and the instrument, you need something like five or six feet. Advance the blue dial until it engages with the eighth inch tubing and then start rotating. And every few turns, every few rotations, turn the dial about a sixteenth or a thirty-second of a turn and keep moving. This will take somewhere in the region of a minute, depending on how dull or sharp the blade is on the tubing cutter. So there you have it. Hopefully your piece will be a bit longer than this. This is a good point to note that not every cut is a clean one. If we move this piece away, it'll be hard to see here, but in this case, there's a small collar that's left on this cut piece. What I recommend doing is using a file to file that off. You don't want that collar to remain because when you then make a compression fitting, that's going to end up cutting the inside of the fitting and potentially causing a leak. I recommend typically three types of file. This is a nice file for surface, in which case you would do this and remove this sort of file, it's a rat's tail file. I tend to use to remove any excess around the edges. I put it between my thumb and the file, and then I'll move it around. And then a third one, a reamer, is quite useful for making sure that that hole isn't too small. If the hole gets too small in the process of cutting the tubing, then you can restrict your flow. The reamer, and I would advise you to be very careful about that, helps you clean out that hole a little bit so that you get better flow. If you used a file or files to remove burrs and imperfections from the end of the tubing, make sure every time to blow the tubing out with pressurized air. This is very important because any filings that remain in here can make their way into the inlet valve of the instrument or into the orifice and change the flow dynamics of the instrument. If they get into the inlet valve, they can cause leaks and damage to the valve. Evacuate this tubing by opening your cylinder valve here, dialing in this black knob, and then opening the toggle valve you installed earlier. You should hear gas flowing. You should be able to verify that by putting your finger on the end. Give it 30 seconds, perhaps a minute. And make sure that you orient it so that any filings actually make their way out and don't get stuck in the coils. At the end, turn that toggle valve back off. Finally, let's connect up the tubing. Now that you have your regulator in place, dial in 2 to 3 PSI on the second stage of the regulator. You don't want to exceed 8 PSI for our systems. Connect the 8th inch tubing at the back here to the thread on the toggle valve that you installed. And then take the other component here and connect it up to the inlet. Finger tighten it first. You'll see that there's a union on here, which is an adapter to take you from an 8th inch thread to a quarter inch nut. Tighten it up with a 9 16 wrench, and an 11 16 wrench, connect up this tubing from the pump, and tighten that up. You want to make sure that you never start the instrument without already having started the pump. That ensures that 
the valves function well and that ensures that the system starts out evacuated rather than pressurized. As a point of quick clarification, that last example was a demonstration of how you would connect a cylinder to our instrument. For example, if you were purging out the cavity before shutdown or performing a calibration. Thanks for watching this video. If you're interested in getting any of the components that I mentioned, for example, this desk kit here, or a zero air dry gas kit, please visit our website at store.picaro.com. For any additional order questions, please email us at orders at I'm Jonathan Bent for Picaro.